might think that we've gone all big budget with mood enhancing dry ice and special effects. But no, it's a sign that we're trying to get those rats on the run. Those pesky rodents are running amok in Roy's parents' garden, so it's time for Roy to get over his phobia and face up to the job in hand. I hate rats. I cannot stand rats. They are the most vile little creatures. No, definitely not my favourite job. I mean, it's something that has to be done this time of year. Um, after the harvest comes in, then obviously the, uh, the rats come off the fields and uh, start to in, uh, inhabit around wherever they can find feed. So obviously where we've got the doves here and we've got the ducks and whatever else, they're, uh, they're, they're coming in and they're starting to breed. So it's time to, to jump on top of them. These canny rodents have an incredible effect on people. There's plenty of chat about bicycle clips around trouser legs before we start. We haven't got clips, but we have got a perfectly good chainsaw, which Roy has dismantled, all in the name of sport. Tools of the trade for today are, we're going to be doing it with a shotgun, um, so when the rats bolt then we're going to be hopefully shooting them, but they can be a bit tricky at close range when you're shooting them. And we're going to be using a converted uh, chainsaw to bolt them out with, so uh, this has uh, got a very sticky mix of um, two stroke in it. So it's a very, very oily mix uh, compared to what you'd normally run. So it lets off a lot of smoke. So we put this down one of the holes in the earth and, uh, and back it up a little bit behind it. The smoke goes down and as the, the uh, smoke filters through the earth, then the rats hopefully start to pop out. So uh, what I'm hoping for is that the smoke actually, uh, you know, gets the rats a little bit before they come out because then they don't run as quickly. So uh, we might stand a chance of hitting a few. I'm getting nervous thinking about it now. I've got sweaty palms. So, on to phase one of Operation Rodent, bolting the rats to shotguns. Jesus, the size of that! The rats don't hang about and you need to know where each gun is standing to do this safely. Ian gets the chainsaw ticking over nicely. Unfortunately, our first attempt delivers no rat action, but the anticipation has us spooked. Even our hardened field sports channel cameraman lets his imagination run away with him. What's up? <laughs> You got one there, David? No, no. <laughs> What's up? Yeah. What's he shouting at? He was screaming. He was screaming at. Hmm. Someone needs to man up. The smoke is now sneaking its way through the burrows, but it has to be managed. As you close off some of the tunnels, it goes further in the warren or in the earth and pushes out. So you can see now, we close these these closer ones off, and we've got smoke coming out of that further side of the earth there now. So we give it a couple of minutes for the smoke to go through just to see if there's any rats in that chamber that want to bolt. And if not, then we'll close that one up and then keep pushing them through the earth. Finally, there are a few shots and Ian doesn't disguise his delight when he hits the target. Yeah, yeah, yes. I got one. <laughs> well, <happy. laughs> He's gone all American on us with that celebration. But we all know that there's no red mist like ratting red mist. Having heard the wails of delight, Mr Lupton Senior comes out for a bit of sport, but sadly the well has dried. The guns reckon they are hindered by the heavy cover. Time for phase two. Bring in the dogs. Yesterday the, uh, the rats were uh, proving a little bit too much. They were running through the bushes and uh, we weren't getting the... Uh, the shots on them that well so uh, we had a few but not as many as we should have done so uh, our shooting skills weren't up to the uh, up to par so I've, uh, I've called up a friend and he's brought some of his terriers down um, so we're going to do it properly so we've got three terriers to, to take out there and uh, have a go um, we've got the, the shotgun as well just in case any get through the fence and off across to the field so we should have all bases covered so uh, <laughs> well, fingers crossed we'll do a bit better than we did yesterday we also have a few more pairs of hands with Peter, who admits he too is a bit rat shy, but does have a shovel to protect himself. And local gamekeeper Gavin with his three Patterdale Terriers. We attach a dog cam to the bitch. She's 10 years old, but keen as mustard and was entered to rats as a puppy. The first port of call is an outbuilding which has had a stack of slates covering the holes. There's definitely something in there, but nothing shows. Next stop is part finished decking. Again, the Patterdale gets a bit frisky. The smoke is worked through the earth, but sadly, no sport for us nor the dogs. We're now back in the heavy cover where we failed so badly with the shotguns. This time we get far more movement, but the dogs don't get a They're clear chance. Or maybe they do. Thankfully, there's more than one way to catch a rat. A well aimed shovel from Peter does the trick. Or maybe not. It's chaos, it's but back. great fun. Fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fish. Yeah. 
Along the fence line, yeah. past the end. Um... Yo, yo, yo! And if you didn't spot the rat, here it is again. And then again. Shame the Patterdale isn't a few inches taller. Right, time for phase three, the air rifles. More subtle than shotguns or dogs, these have probably accounted for more rats than any other method in the UK. Having got our energy back with a banquet of cheap Chinese, we hope the rats fancy our delicious offering being delivered to them tonight on a plate. Right, after uh, a couple of uh, diabolical attempts and uh, not many rats accounted for with the guns and the, uh, the dogs, we've decided to go for phase three, so uh, we're covert ratting now. What we've done is we've taken all the, the duck food and all of the pigeon food up um, and we've put the sodium lights on and they've been on for the last couple of nights. So the rats have been used to coming out and feeding with them on. So we've just waited for it to get uh, dark and we're going to sit up in uh, the top of the old uh, building over there with the lights uh, just over the lawn where the rats have been coming out and feeding. We've made a, a, a delectable evening meal for them. So we've got a bit of juice, on, we've got a bit of meat juice on there. We've got some nice skippy peanut butter, a bit of rice, crunched up pour on crackers. So hopefully that'll act as a good bait board. Um, done it on a whiteboard as well so it'll uh, just help us to see them if they're, if they're coming into it and hopefully we'll account for a few so uh, we're just getting a, a cup of tea on the go and uh, we'll go up there and see how we get on. Roy and Ian will each take a top window with a great view of the pond and garden. We hope the turkeys will be able to get some shut eye even with the bright sodium lights and pellets whizzing through the air. Uh, we've got a, an old theoban that I'm using which is a, a pre-charge and I'm not sure what rifle Ian's using, he's got a, a pre-charge as well, so hopefully we'll have a bit of success with them tonight. But we're just going to load up the magazines, make sure we're all up and ready. What um, air rifle have you got in? An S410. An S410, right. Air and, air and that's just a 1.7, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, I've got a 2.2, Ian's got a 1.7. The only thing is, with rat shooting with the 1.7, that Ian's going to be doing is we might see, I mean, I'm sure he'll hit the rats, but um, they'll probably run a little bit because with the 1.7 it tends just to whiz straight through rats and not stop them on the spot and they'll head back to the, uh, the earth. So they will be dead, but not on the spot. So we'll just have to see how we get on. But if all else fails, if we can't get them with the air rifle, then we've got the old 410 as backup. So just in case we get any that are the size of cats, we've got something to do them with. This time we get a clear view of the rat problem below, but these animals are incredibly cautious. They stick to the fence, frustratingly the other side of it, and they're steering clear of our tempting food offering. It's a waiting game. Eventually some break cover and we get results. A few drop on the spot. Others disappear as the pellets fly straight through. We have a bit of a switch around and put the board closer to the run, but it still doesn't bring them in. The time just whizzes by as we pit our wits against this resilient rodent. It's now one o'clock in the morning and the rats have had us well and truly beaten today. But of all three techniques, the air rifles have been the most efficient. Well, we've, we've finally accounted for uh, more than the odd one or two anyway now, so uh, it's, uh, we'll carry on for the rest of the night and, uh, and see if we can get a few more. It's... Uh, I think we cleaned up a little bit too much though. I think we, uh, we cleaned up a lot of the, the scrub a bit earlier um, where the rats had been coming out um, and where they'd been sort of happy feeding and uh, just sort of coming out and nipping back into the scrub. And we cleaned that off a little bit earlier today. And so they seem a little bit more wary than I was hoping they would be, but we've had half a dozen or so so far. So hopefully if we carry on for another couple of hours into the wee hours, then uh, we might account for a few more. So. Uh, that's it. A few, uh, a few mugs of coffee and we'll see how we get on. Ratting is enormously entertaining. If you get the chance, give it a go.